So a lot of studies are taking place on board the International Space Station looking at various changes that happen to the human body. And one of the major concerns that we're looking at right now is actually vision changes in the astronauts uh, that have been experienced and that we've been paying attention to. Um, I'm joined today by uh, Dr. Scott Smith from the Nutri Nutritional Biochemistry Lab here at the Johnson Space Center, who just had a report published um, in the Federation of American Societies for Experimental Biology Journal. Uh, but he's actually looking at vision changes as well. So, uh, Doctor, first off, thank you so much for joining us. Tell us what, give us some background real quick. What are some of the changes or the effects to astronaut vision that we are looking at solving? Well, uh, thanks for the invitation and it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, with regard to the vision changes, um, in simple terms that, that I understand, we see people going up with per perfect vision mm -hmm. that come home and need glasses. Okay. Um, it's a little more complex than that. When you do some detailed eye exams, you see things like what they call disc edema. You see changes in the shape of the eye or what they call globe flattening, mm -hmm. cotton wool spots, uh, a number of different things that the eye doctors find um, that are a little more nuanced. But again, the, the bottom line is um, people that had what you would call perfect vision don't. Okay. And so we've been talking a lot this week about fluid shifts. It's an experiment for the one-year crew that's looking at um, the potential that the fluid redistributing could be changing the vision. And so tell me, how does nutritional biochemistry come into the mix? Well, that's, that's a great question. I get asked that a lot. My daughter asked me that this past weekend. So you got um, a good answer. I, I hope. <laughs> um, and first of all, you need to realize that nutrition is more than just what you put in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And that the study of nutrition involves not only things like carbohydrate and protein and vitamins and minerals, but how those things work in the body. And the biochemistry behind how your muscles make energy and how your brain utilizes glucose and how mm -hmm. vitamins help with biochemical functions is all part of nutrition. And that's, that's how we got involved in this in the short story. Okay, and so there's more to it than just the nutritional aspect in, in this paper and everything. You guys are also looking at the genetics behind it. Tell me how that got into the mix as well. Well, what happened was, I guess it was about five years ago now, when there were a lot of folks trying to figure out what was going on with these, with these vision issues. And when we looked at our data, what we found is differences in blood chemistry mm -hmm. between astronauts that had vision issues and those that did not. Okay. And we ruled out lots of things, and one of the things that struck us was that we found that individuals that had these vision issues had these different blood chemistries before flight. Okay, so it might be some kind of and predisposed. It, exactly. Okay. At that point, we started looking for um, reasons that there could be differences beforehand. And, and the, the key thing that jumped up was the potential for genetics. Mm -hmm. And we started looking at the genetics um, related to the chemicals that we were seeing in the blood that were different. And that's what the, the, that's what the paper we just published found is some key findings related to differences in genetics that explain uh, those biochemical differences mm -hmm. that we now need to try to go figure out what is it about those individuals that is leading them to have vision issues while others do not. Okay, so obviously this is gonna be an issue that could have a whole bunch of potential causes. And so what's some of the work that you guys are gonna be going ahead and doing to try and solve it on your end, to solve what you were just talking about? Well, the, the first thing we need to do is when we first looked at this, we took a very small look at the genetics. We looked at literally a handful of mm -hmm. points in the DNA where we thought there could be issues. We knew at the time that there was a broader set to be looked at. Uh, we looked at five of these genetic differences. We should have looked at 300, mm -hmm. 400. Um, but at the time, we were a little reluctant to go in that deep. Um, so we took a small stab and we got very lucky because two of those five came up as significant. Okay. What we now want to do is go back and look at those three or 400 points because while we did find significance with those two, there's a lot of folks that had vision issues that didn't fit our model, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and we're thinking that we may be able to get a better picture by looking at a broader set of the genetics. So that's one of the first things uh, we hope to do. Okay, so I mean, obviously a, a whole lot to be done still. And this this an, is an issue that is stemming from something we noticed in space and astronauts. But we always like to talk about and we always like to know, are there any impacts that this kind of research could have to those of us living here on planet Earth? Well, indeed. and and. 
With regard to this one, um, one of the things that we found in reviewing our data mm -hmm. and in reviewing the literature, the scientific literature, what we found is that um, there's a population out there with several characteristics that are very similar to astronauts with vision issues. Okay. Everything from the differences in chemistry, blood chemistry that I talked about, um, differences in, in intracranial pressure that um, everybody seems to think is related to this thing, mm -hmm. um, differences in carbohydrate metabolism, differences in hormones, differences in lots of things. What we found is a clinical population that is very similar, appears to be very similar to our astronauts. Okay. And that population is women diagnosed with what's known as polycystic ovary syndrome, mm -hmm. or PCOS. And that is, a, is something that we found that, um, again, there's a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. um, one of the studies we've proposed is to look at that a little closer. We've actually, um, we're trying to work with folks up at the Mayo Clinic. Okay. Um, they've got a study in women with PCOS, and what we're trying to do is a study to expand that and see if we can look at the differences that we found in astronauts and see if we can match that up. Hmm. And the potential implications in both directions that things we could learn from women with PCOS about astronauts mm -hmm. and vice versa, things we could learn from the space program that might have implications for um, a, a significant, you know, it's estimated that 10 to 15 percent of women have PCOS. Oh, wow. So the, the potential implications are huge. All right. Well, again, Dr. Scott Smith from the Nutritional Biochemistry Lab here at the Johnson Space Center tell, talking to us about vision changes. Doctor, uh, thanks so much for joining me today. It's a, it's a fascinating paper. It's a Thank fascinating you. study, and I'm sure there's a whole lot more to come. Thanks again. It's a pleasure to be here.